y'all are here. This is, like I said, I, you know, this is a uh, service that is, in many ways, it's just a, well, it means more than you may realize in a lot of different ways. We've come together at this point in our lives, and I believe the hand of God is on us for good, not for evil, and he can turn things around. We join our hearts and lives together to just just help each other and just do the work that God's called us to do. Hallelujah. This is our 40th year, and we're just uh, just trusting that, that God will complete what he has begun in your life and our lives, all of us together. You know, after you've been around for a while, you, you realize that just because it doesn't happen like you thought it would doesn't mean it can't be better than you thought it was. I know a lot of people who are very strong, you know, and they, they follow God's will, but things happen in their life that they, they didn't think it would happen that way. But the part you do know, that you lay down, you give God what you do have, he'll take care of what you don't know. Amen? Amen. Don't you love that video? We were at that church in Ireland, and uh, the pastor of the church, when he said, you know, this church grew by 40%, Irish Catholics getting filled with the Holy Ghost, born again filled with the Holy Ghost, going into their uh, sphere of influence and bringing others in. They also, his wife went on there, it wasn't on there, but they also got a new building, and it was in a location with, in Ireland, he's from uh, Derry, I believe that's right, and if you're Protestant, you can live in the same street live in the same uh, uh, neighborhood. If you're Protestant, your address says Derry, Ireland. If you're Catholic, it says London, Derry. The, uh, the, actually, all of the division, the religious division, started in the area where they are. And God has a way of, aren't you glad? Yeah. Love never fails. God can bring us together. Amen. For God is the glory and the lifter of your head. He will cause you to move forward and make progress in areas where others say it's over. There's nothing out of here. But it's never over with the God who sees and light shines out of darkness. It's never over with the God who says you can live again even when you're at the place where others say it's over. So trust him in this hour and lift up your heads. For he is still the God who knows the number of the sands of the seashore. And he is able to complete that which he has started in you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. I love Hallelujah. to sing songs Hallelujah. that just testify of what the God, what the Lord has done. You know, you can just, you may have to contend for a situation, but you don't have to make it happen. You just trust, you put your hand and trust in the one who has said, I have already been where you're going. Amen. Amen. This is one. Yes. You good? Everybody good? All right, are you ready? Oh, glory to God. Just fill up on the truth and just let everything else, let it go. Let it go. Amen. Woo. Oh, the Bible says he redeemed us. That means what we lost, he got it back. Amen. Oh, so if somebody wants to call you a name, you just tell them what the Lord says about you.
you right now, put your hands on it. Men who believe in the healing power of Jesus. I said men who believe in the healing power of Jesus. Yes, yes. Just get in the habit. Yes. 
But the fruit of your lips. Somebody thank you with your mouth right there. Since the anointing, the anointing changes with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Remember you said there was a word? You said the last time that I was here there was a word. Part of that word was you had said to me. I'm going to back up a minute. She gave a word that nobody else knew of the day before and touched me. And, and then the next oh, day, <laughs> yeah. and the next day you gave another word to me, and you said, well, the Lord said through you, the place that the Lord has given you, you will run with new strength, new vision, and new ability. Now, she did not know that I was on television at camp at camp. <laughs> Cable television for 32 years. The Lord has never had me go any further than that. And I was at a very low time of my life when you said that. So I got the, the CD. I got the CD and I brought it home and I played it and I wrote it down. And every morning and every night I have said that over myself since you gave it to me. Oh, Amen. Amen. Because when you know a word is from God, it's just as real as what's in the word of God. Oh, yes. And so I just said that over myself. Oh, except this month. This month I can only say it twice. <laughs> Bless you. And then I can't tell you the month, the day, or the time the Lord just pulled me aside. And he says, now, now you know I'm a word teacher and a faith teacher, and I've taught in here, so you know it. But he says, from now on, I want you to teach the cross. Amen. And everything that was accomplished at the cross and the resurrection. And I says, how long? And he says, you can't exhaust it. <laughs> Amen. And so I I was obedient and went to it. And that's what I've been teaching. I don't care who likes it or don't like it. I'm going to be obedient to God. Amen. 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 That's what I've been teaching. He, he told me, he says, if you don't have your eyes on the cross and of Jesus and what he did, and you confess the word, you're just breathing out air. Oh, wow. He says, when you have your eyes on that cross and on what Jesus has done for you, then there's power. Yes. Yes. Amen. You know why? Amen. Because at the cross, at the cross, yeah. where I first saw the light. Amen. 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 I'm going to say one more thing. Oh, You know, it's preached the cross and we preach the resurrection because that's the proof who Jesus was and what he did and where we're justified. But when Jesus said, in my, in my father's house are many mansions and I go to prepare a place for you, he said, our many mansions, our mansions being there. The place that he prepared for us is the blood on the mercy seat where we're made righteous, yes, yes. where grace yes, and mercy abounds. That's the place. He sealed it with his blood on the mercy seat. Just took my sermon for tomorrow night. Praise God. Praise God. I know she kind of glories here. Of course, they're not concerned about us stealing their thunder. We <laughs> have the thunder of God. Amen. And then is the, is the anointing of God. But as she was ministering uh, today, I, I just got a word in my spirit that, you know, keep the switch of faith turned on. Oh, yeah. You just never right. know yeah. the manifestation. Hallelujah. You know, we're, we're faith people and we think that immediately. But, you know, even we said it today in the car. That a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day to the Lord. God, we don't want to wait any thousand years, and I believe we're not going to. But the the, the object is just like uh, 
we said here that we need to keep that that faith going all the time regardless of what we see or what's happening around us we need to lift our hands to God and thank him to our father for the answer to that because it'll manifest I've seen it it's taken maybe a couple years or more maybe three or four years did I enjoy waiting? No. But you know what? I never gave up because God is faithful. God is faithful. He's faithful to perform those things that he told us to already pray for. You know, when we pray, it's already been accomplished. We just need to ask and he'll bring it to pass in our midst. Amen? So don't give up. Don't give up. Thank him daily for everything. Joanne, thank him daily. Joanne, don't give up. Don't go speak in doubt and unbelief just because you've seen things fail four or five times. That's too bad. Only four or five times. <laughs> and then just keep the switch of faith there and God. Don't look back like we were singing the song. Don't look back. Just keep going forward, looking forward. Because you will see the manifestation. Yes. 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 He is faithful. Yes. He is faithful. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Jesus, I love you.
But you know, you want to get what God said. Yeah. Right on. You know, I mean, it's stirring in me. I got something in the crock pot. It's it's <laughs> stewing. Yeah. And I got to get there tomorrow night. But tonight, there's a, there's a something. I, I really, I had this word just came to me uh, yesterday when I was studying. I, I wrote down some things on it. And I want to share them with you. And it's the word crossroads. Amen. Crossroads. Oh, wow. You know, everybody has crossroads in their yeah, life. Yeah. <laughs> and um, a crossroad, a, a definition of it is an intersection of two or more roads. I like this one. A point at which a crucial decision must be made that will have far-reaching consequences. Let us say that again. A point at which a crucial decision must be made that will have far-reaching consequences. Mm -hmm. Obedience to the Word of God is what is uh, really uh, necessary when you're at a crossroads in your life. Mm -hmm. Obedience mm -hmm. to the Word of God. Not just obedience um, uh, in... Um, it's how you move from just hearing about something. Uh, you could say it's how you move from being from a skeptic to surrender. Yeah. Yeah. From skepticism to surrender yeah. is obedience. Yeah. Obedience. And I know we're all at different places, but if you learn how to obey God in the small things, you'll be able to obey him in the big things. Now, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And you don't have to make him love you. But obedience is what makes you aware of what he's done for you. Amen. It doesn't make it happen, but it makes you aware of what's happened. Amen. Obedience is not necessary for God to love you, but it is necessary for you to fulfill, you could say for you to be, you can't love God. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. Amen. You could say that. Right. It really is what helps you to establish your love for God. Daisy Osborne said this. She was the wife of T.L. Osborne. Who was very good friends with uh, 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 the first time we ever went to France was with T.L. and Daisy Osborne. They were wonderful encouragers to us. We would get letters personally from uh, from TL he would send us letters with a check from his personal account or uh, says he'd say I want don't 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 quit on France don't quit on France he was such because he knew he told us he said you have the song for France he said every move of God there are songs that help facilitate that move and you have the songs for France Hallelujah. well we we went into France and we we learned to sing in French it was the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life we almost split up. I split didn't up. like doing it. I did it for one reason. I used to go home at night. We'd be in the studio. We had someone who just, you know, we learned it phonetically. Now, my husband Ray actually took it in uh, high school, and he's very good at, he really has the intonation. He's very good, and Cindy can fake it amazingly. It's just <laughs> But, you know, it was just one of those we, we, we learned it, yeah, you just, <laughs> But uh, it was the hardest thing I'd ever done, but it was one of the most important things we have ever done. And the only reason I did it was because of obedience. And I didn't feel like doing it the whole way through. But I did it. And I'm so glad I did. The reward of obedience is not always, we think about what we get. It's not really what you get. It's what you become. You really won't become what God wants you to. I'm talking about tasting, seeing. I mean, your neighborhood, it's in your garage. The way that happens is obedience. And uh, oh, she said this, the deepest issue in life, the deepest issue in life is committing yourself unreservedly to Christ's great calling. No reserve got nothing. There's not a little room up over here where he never touches. There's not a little place over here. You know, we all have to deal with areas. In our, we live in a world where, you know, you do have to bathe regularly. Amen. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just need to get 
clean off. You know, you can do nothing but sit in your house for three days and start smelling. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? In other words, just because you're here, you're going to need to have a little bit of adjustment, some cleaning of the water with the word of God. You're just going to have to let it clean your soul out. Just debris, just stuff starts stinking, and if you get used to it, I mean, you know, it's like that friend of ours who, you know, he wanted to pay a prank on his, he wanted to do a prank on his roommate, so while his roommate was asleep, he rubbed Limburger cheese under his nose, as he called it, and when the guy woke up, he said, man, something stinks in here. It's a true story. And he walked into the next room, living room, whatever it was, and he said, man, something stinks in here, too. <laughs> he opened the door, walked outside, he said, man, the whole world stinks. <laughs> well, it wasn't the whole world that stinks. It was right under his nose. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so you just think everything's bad, but really it's just right here, but you just don't know it. And so anyway, uh, there's a few things. I, I So I just wrote down some things I want to talk to just share with you concerning because the Holy Spirit's moving. Amen. He's, he's on the move. Amen. And the whole secret of your life in Christ to uh, and understand new creation realities is to move with him. Because yeah. yeah. as you move with him, he opens up another area of that newness. In fact, I love what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in the New Living Translation when it says when someone becomes a Christian, uh, he's not the same anymore. I like how it says this. A new life has begun. Yeah. 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 Has begun. Never existed before. Woo! In other words, uh, you just spend the rest of your time on this earth just entering into the newness the new things that God has done for you. We're going to get to some of those things tomorrow night, but tonight I want to read this to you. Uh, obedience. Remember this about obedience, and I have no idea where I heard this. If I heard something and it made me think of this, I don't know. But obedience always begins with something you can do. Always. But it will take you to something only God can do. Yeah, hallelujah. It always begins with something you can do. You say, I, I just I just can't, you know, I just can't. Most of the time, the reason we're, we're not further along or we don't see any more light is because we haven't obeyed in the light we've already seen. Amen. You understand? Amen. I mean, the secret to walking into more light is to walk in the light you already have. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you get in a service like this and you start worshiping God and you become aware of his greatness and you become aware of who he is, it's just like it shoots adrenaline into your soul. That's why sometimes people want to start running because it's like, man, I didn't think I had anywhere to go. And now I just can't. I just like a Forrest Gump, you know, where he said uh, he started, you know, he, when the bullies were trying to mess with him and his friends start yelling, run, Forrest, run. Well, Forrest had braces on his legs. How many of y'all remember? That? I just saw this this scene a few weeks ago, and Forrest had braces on his legs. But his friend, I think her name was Jenny, she starts telling them these bullies are trying to hassle him, and she just starts saying, "Run, Forrest!" And then the movie they make her mouth and her voice get real. Run, Forrest, run! <laughs> Well, she's not talking to a, you know, marathon sprinter. She's talking to her friend, Forrest Gump, who's got braces on his legs and walking like this. But she says, run, Forrest, run. Well, Forrest just looked back at her and thought, okay. And he starts running. And as he starts running, his braces start falling off. And as he's running, I want to get a clip of him playing in church. And as he starts running and his braces start falling off, he said, I know you might not believe it, but he said, from that day on, I could run like the wind. He said, if I was going somewhere, I was running. And it's like, what, what happened when he started running? What he thought was keeping him from running just fell off. I thought that's exactly what happens with the things of God. You get in a service and you just want to run and you think, I can't do it. But then all of a sudden you realize, I can do it. God is greater than that. And so that's why sometimes in a praise and worship service, people just get, you know, they just want to move. It's all right, we understand. It's like when my husband was on the prices right. How many of you know he was on the prices right? And when he was on the prices right, he got called down. Great, Toucher, come on down. He actually went to the showcase showdown. 
He did. He won his thing and then he won his game and then he went to the. We got. We still got the same. Uh, is it table or chairs? Hutch and we still got it in our room in our uh, house today. But uh, anyway, he when he got, they called his name and they said, "Ray Toucher, come on down." I got so excited. <laughs> I might have told you this story before. I got so excited. I jumped up so fast. Woo! And when I did, I stuck my finger up the nose of the lady. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Now, under normal circumstances, you got a lawsuit. But we were at the presses, right? He just got his name called to come on down. And when I looked at her and I said, oh, I'm sorry. She said, it's okay, honey. I understand. That's the way I feel when I'm in a praise service sometimes. People start shouting and running. I think, it's okay. I understand. <laughs> Somebody bumps into you and you're like, what are you hear people? Oh, it's okay. I understand. You just found out you can run, Forrest. Run. <laughs> something you can do, but it'll always take you to something only God can do. Uh, he says in, um, uh, I'm going to get down, really, let me get down to this part. I'm just going to give you this part. Um, uh, the walk of faith. You don't have to know everything. You just act on the part you do know. Amen. And so I'm going to read you the story uh, out of, uh, well, actually, let me read you this first. Hebrews 11 verse 8 says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing where he went. What's it say about Abraham? By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive an inheritance. In other words, God told him to go, and he, he didn't. He, he literally, it says, he didn't know where he was going, but he obeyed. It always begins with something you know. Amen. Abraham began. He obeyed. He began to, when God said, get out and follow, and get out of this place. When God said, uh, uh, Romans chapter 4, when he said, Abraham believed God when it was hopeless, when he had nothing, when he was as good as dead, but he believed God. And the Bible said when he believed God, he turned a hopeless situation, a man who was as good as dead, into an heir of the promise of God. But he obeyed. Obedience, obedience always starts with something you can do. Amen. Abraham had to move with what he knows yeah, he needed to do. Right. Now I'm telling you, the crossroads in your life will be answered with your obedience to God. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. But I can guarantee you that the Holy Spirit will show you. Amen. It might be a phrase or something you're saying that will begin to turn the corner in your life. You know, many times it begins with words. Words, if you do everything else but you don't change how you talk about it, your words, James says, your tongue is like the rudder on a ship. And you can take a big old ship and turn it with a very small piece. That's what happens in your life. But I'm going to read you this story real quick here, okay? It's actually, um, I want to show you a story from the Word of God, how that you can move from just hearing about Jesus to being obedient and literally uh, walking into His plan. The crossroads in your life is answered with not just hearing about Jesus, but obeying what he's saying to you. Now it starts in uh, um, uh, here, where we're going to go. In John, uh, this is in the Bible. Uh, it starts in John chapter 1, verse 40. And in John chapter 1, verse 40, we read where uh, Peter, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, hears about Jesus. And it says in John chapter 1, verse 40, as uh, Jesus was. Uh, uh, speaking, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Now, this is what I want you to see. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, is hearing Jesus. So this is what Andrew does. He finds 
his brother, Simon Peter, and he says to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And Andrew, he brought him, Andrew brought Peter to Jesus. So now here, uh, Andrew's heard about Jesus. Now Andrew goes to his brother and says, I found Jesus. I found the Messiah. And now Andrew gets Peter and takes him to Jesus. And he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus looks at Peter and he says, you are Simon, the son of Jonah, but you will be called Cephas, which is translated to stone. So now how is this happening? Here he's hearing about Jesus from his brother. Now his brother is taking him to Jesus. Now Jesus starts talking to him. I'm telling you, you hear about the things of God. And then something from God begins to be said to you. It's not just something somebody else heard. It's something you're hearing. Now watch what happens here. Because it says here that uh, uh, though somebody else told him, uh, in other words, the first time was just someone else telling him. But when he was taken to Jesus, Jesus begins to talk to him. And honestly, I don't think Peter really understood what he was saying. And sometimes when you first hear what God's talking about, your natural, sorry I have a hair here or something, your natural mind doesn't quite comprehend. Because see, it's always a word of faith. And faith is not something that is understood with the natural mind. It's like with Abraham. When he went, left, not knowing where he's going, in the natural mind, if you don't know how you're going, how are you going to know when you get there? Well, I'll tell you how you're going to know. You're following somebody who does know where you're going. So faith is when you're following the word that God has spoken to you. You don't have all the answers. But you have the one you need to start. You can't choose always where everything ends up in your life. But you can choose the day you start. Amen. Obedience is that day, that crossroads in your life. And so let me get to this story here. So skip over here to, and in uh, Luke chapter uh, 4, uh, you go into Luke chapter 4 and you get to verse 38 and you read where Jesus uh, had arose from the synagogue and he entered Simon Peter's house. Now this is now the second time, bless you, that uh, Peter has met with Jesus. Now he heard about him and now uh, Andrew told him about him and Jesus now, it's not just something Andrew said, but now it's something Jesus is saying to him, but now he gets to this uh, event. This is the next event. I'm skipping over here. Luke chapter 4, verse uh, 38. Now Jesus arose from the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever, and they made requests of him concerning her. So he stood over her, and he rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she arose and served them. And when the sun was setting, all those who had any sick, uh, that were sick with various diseases, brought them to him, and he laid hands on them, and every one of them was healed. Now we've gone from Peter hearing about Jesus to Jesus talking to who, him personally, and now Jesus has come into his house. Now it's getting close, but watch what happens next. Now there's exposure to the things of God. Yes, Peter's heard. Yes, Jesus has spoke to him. Yes, he's had him being exposed to the working power of God. But watch what seals the deal. See, Peter has still not left all and followed Jesus. He hasn't entered into a life of surrender. This all happened before that. He gets over here in Luke chapter 5. And it says in Luke chapter 5, verse 1, Now as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, speaking of Jesus, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them, and they were washing their nets. And uh, so then he, Jesus, got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. And he asked him to put him out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered him and he said, Master, we have toiled all night and we've caught nothing. Watch this. Nevertheless, at your word, 
I will let down the net. Talking about, now listen, listen now. Jesus is getting Peter to the place where he's giving him, obeying him. And what Jesus is saying is not something that's just happened to his brother or he's just heard or even his mother-in-law, everybody else. Now it's something he's participating in. Watch what happens here. He says to him, nevertheless, I'll remember obedience always begins with something you can do. But it will take you to something only God can do. At your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished, overwhelmed at the catch of fish which they were taking. And also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said, to them, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Woo! What happened here? This was the crossroads. Everything else had led up to this moment. It wasn't the end of his life of faith. It was the beginning of a new place of surrender. How did it happen? This was the first time Peter had given Jesus something from his life. Jesus was in his boat. This was his profession. This is what he did with his life. And Jesus got right in the middle of it. And when Jesus came to him and he obeyed what Jesus was asking of him, it changed his life. It always begins with something you can do, but it will take you to something only God can do. It changed his dreams, his goals, his visions. Literally, I like what one uh, Bible commentary says. If he can fill my boat and I with so much fish that I'm overwhelmed with the catch, I'm a professional fisherman. If he can fill my boat, what can he do with my life? You'll never know until you let down the net. Amen. You'll never know. Maybe somebody will tell you. Maybe even you'll hear the word of God. Maybe even you'll be exposed to the moving of the Spirit. Amen. But you'll never know what a great catch God can give your life. What a great, you could say, how, what can God do with your life? You'll never know yeah. until you let down the net. Yeah. I know it's a time of crossroads. But I'm here to tell you, you can do it. Yes. Obedience to God is something you are made for. It's a supernatural call that you'll enter into when you give him all that you have. Charles Spurgeon said this. I love what he said this. He said, uh, no man fully does his master's will without getting a distinct reward. Simon Peter's boat full of fish was his reward for launching out at Christ's word and at keeping his commandment. There is always great reward. There is usefulness to others. There is happiness to yourself. And there is glory to God. And then he says this. While the everlasting salvation of the Christian does not depend upon what he does, yet his own comfort, his own usefulness, and the glory which he will bring to God must depend upon it. You wonder why some people still speak, though dead. Louder than some people speak a lot. That's yeah, what, that's what yeah. Charles Spurgeon said. Isn't that good? Yeah. I just love it. He said, uh, Oswald Chambers said, The Lord does not give me rules. He makes his standards very clear. If my relationship to him is that of love, I will do what he says. If I hesitate, it is because I love someone I have placed in competition with him. Ooh. Namely, oh. myself. Woo! 
glory to God, obedience begins with what you can do, but it will take you to what only God can do. Amen. It includes everyone, no matter where you are in life. If you're older, it says in Hebrews 11, verse 11, uh, uh, considering Sarah, this is for the old ones. By faith, Sarah herself also re received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age. That means her time was past. But she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him Faithful who had promised. Amen. Amen. Woo! And the words that came to her that strengthened her, that she used, the Bible tells us what they are, that she used to hang her hat on is Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. Is anything too hard for God? Oh, That's what the angel told her. She had already said, that's just, you just, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm too old. And the angel said, I heard you laugh and say it couldn't happen. She said, I didn't laugh. He said, yes, you did. And then he said, is anything too hard for God? No. So now she has, she's at a crossroads. What am I going to do? And I'm going to take that, strengthen myself in that, step over the line of what age says is impossible for me. You know, the Bible says that she strengthened herself. Yeah, right. She literally, I bet she was walking around the house going, is anything too hard for God? Nothing's too hard for my God. Uh, nothing's too hard. I'm sure she must have because that's what the angel told her. And she received. Yeah, right. She received. That means she didn't start off strong. She became strong. Yeah, she received the strength. To fulfill the promise of God. You're in here and you think you're older. You receive that strength. From the word of God. You receive it. Is anything too hard for God? Nothing is impossible to him who believes. Nothing is too hard for my God. Oh is anything too hard or wonderful for God? The deepest. Remember the deepest issues in life are settled. They're, they're all about committing yourself. Unreservedly to God's great uh, calling. Right. To the young, I'll say this one and then I'm through. Y'all okay? Amen. To the young, I want to tell you what God's word was. Uh, that, uh, to a, a young girl, her name was Esther. She was an orphan. She was an orphan. She was exiled in bondage, adopted by her uh, uh, uncle. Uh, but her most defining legacy and most identifying legacy, some people don't even know she was a, an orphan. They know she was a queen. Yeah. How'd she go from just being an a exiled orphan, uh, um, uh, just, just someone who could, you know, maybe it just, you know, just, just, it wasn't in the cards for me to be in a queen. She came to the crossroads in her life. She taken at exile. She was uh, taken captive in exile. But she found from the word of God, her, her, when, when she was at the crossroads, what should I do right now? There's this going on. There's this going on. Uh, Haven, I won't tell you the whole story, but her, uh, what's it, cousin or uncle? Uncle? Uncle Mordecai came to her in Esther 4.14. And he said to her, if you remain silent at this time, deliverance will arise from the, uh, for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I like the pulpit commentary on this. He says, perhaps, Esther, consider this, Esther, perhaps... Who knows? God has raised you up to your royal dignity for this very purpose and none other that you should be in a position to save your nation in this crisis. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, she was just a young orphan, exiled. Now she'd gotten a position to be queen. But it wasn't about any of the bad or the good. It was about if she was going to obey what yeah. God right. was asking. Right. 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 And when he says, who knows, literally the idea is, now God's going to do something. 
Now, Esther, do you believe he can do it in you? Because he's going to do it. And if you will enter in, if you let down the net, if you, you're, she was just things she was doing. And behind the scenes, God was taking care of things she didn't even know about. But there was obedience to the word of God. Now, I'm here to tell you, listen, listen. It's not too late. You're not too young. It's not too much. What God's plan for your life is, is an overwhelming, astonishing catch of his goodness, his glory, his grace, his redemption, his purpose is much greater than your failure. Listen, listen, come on. The crossroads where a crucial decision must be made that will have far Reaching oh, consequences. Yes, yes. I'm aware of it. How about you? I am so aware of it. And let me tell you something. Don't have donuts with the devil. Don't wake up tomorrow morning and start thinking and talking about all the things that can't possibly happen. That's not good. You're not going to get any change by focusing on everything that's wrong. And if you really want change, I'm talking about the kind of change that comes from the one who says, let down your net on the other side. Just begin to say, nevertheless, it's your word. I believe. I believe I am who you say I am, God. Look in the mirror tomorrow morning. Don't you say, good Lord, it's morning. You look in the mirror and you say, good morning, Lord. And then find a scripture that helps you step over the line in the sand. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God's at work in this church. He's at work in the people's lives who are here. He is at work. As surely as when Peter let down those nets, he didn't know. He said, I ain't caught nothing all night, and I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. We don't have any record of Peter ever having a good catch except at the word of the Lord. You say, my life has just not turned out the way I thought. Well, you know, the word of the Lord can take your life and fill it up with his call. And where you thought you had no place to go, there's nothing there. He will fill you up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is that what you want? All right. That's okay. This is one of Ray's favorite songs. You know, you wonder how come we're still together after 40 years. People try to figure it out all the time. We do too. <laughs> you want more than anything? There's a lot of things, but really it's just really a total 100% commitment to obey the, the, the word of God to us. And believe me, we don't always do it right. But we, <laughs> but we don't stop. Amen. No. God wants to take your life, fill it up with his will, and then use what you have to share and tell the world who he is. Oh, glory to God. God, help us to become aware of what you're saying to us this hour.
release it. Father, let's forgive. All is over. You want to come back home? He said, son, you don't have a problem. Your wife's in trouble. He worked on his heart. She broke down. She couldn't believe it. You know, I'm not so sure. I, I, the name's counselors. They just, they just, counselors are ahead. You know what I'm saying. They wouldn't go to the Bible because we have a radical Bible. Amen. Radical God. Powerful God. We believe the gospel. Yeah. And so, and he said, he found out, he said, I, I know who you were with. And when she said that, she thought, oh man, I thought everything was going to be okay. And now I'm in trouble again. He doesn't really She got fear. Fear would drive you. She said, I had a messed up moment. My mind was twisted. I was in fear. I had a dark night. I had a dark time. And now it's going to be over because he knows who he is. And, and he said, honey, let's go visit him. True story. They went and knocked on his door and the guy was shocked. And he said, we need to ask you to forgive us. And she said, I had just at the time, she said, it was dark. It was a moment. I, I, I'm a Christian. I, I should have known better. Never say that. They should have known better. Never say that out your mouth. How many times have you should have known better? Did God change? No. And she said, I'm so sorry. And he said, we apologize. He said, we're sorry that you got involved in all this. But the guy is shocked. And he said, honey, would you go out to the car and and he talked to me. He said, "I just." He said, well, "He said I want you to know how much, how sorry we are, and all is forgiven. I hold nothing against you." You realize who he's talking to, don't you? Because you see, he said, "Yeah, but what they did, it's none of your business. What they did, you're supposed to walk them up. But you don't know what they did. It doesn't matter." What well, I don't think they really repented. It doesn't, it's none of your business if they did. Your business is to walk in love. Your business is to release it. So that you can go to the crossroads and finish what God has called you to do. You see, we want what he gives, but sometimes we don't want to give what he gave. It's none of your business. Vengeance is the Lord's. You've got, a, you've got a crossroads that you're coming to, and now what are you going to do at this place? Are you going to let shame or guilt, or are you going to let somebody else's offense? Don't let someone else's sin to you live through you. Am I making any sense? And once you let that go, like the lady with AIDS, she had messed up. She was from a gospel family. She went to the pastor. She was so ashamed to say it. She said, well, I have diabetes. And he prayed for diabetes. And she came to him the next day. And she said, she went for healing. And she, she said, I don't have diabetes. And he said, well, what, what do you have? She said, I have AIDS because I'm so ashamed of my life. You see, make yourself a safe place for anybody to come to. I feel like your pastors are very safe. You could probably go to them with anything. And they'd say, well, we want to start here. Amen. That's the type of people they are. Yes. Godly people. That's the, that's the type of they are. You can go there with them. They'll never shop. Go with the woodwork. Go with the woodwork. Because once that lady said, I'm so sorry. I wish I hadn't have done it. It was as though at that point on, she never did. Amen. Woo! Amen. That'll set you free at your crossroads. Let everything go. Let people go. What they do or do not do is none of your business. It's what you've done with the love of God. He can't work through you if he doesn't have your heart. That's what Moses is talking about. We, we've got, he's got to have our heart. Don't let anything stop it. See, actually, getting in Peter's boat 
was just the way he got in Peter's heart. But Peter had to say, you can't, you can't hang on to any part of your life. You can't, you, you said, well, I deserve this part. You don't. You, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's none of your business what somebody else does. What do you do? That's what you think about. Yes, I will finish what God's called me to do. That's what we're gonna. The lady who, the lady with AIDS. Do you know what happened? He said, he said, you have AIDS. I was, I was, I was in the because I thought life was passing me by. And she came from a gospel family. She, she, they were known in the city. And the pastor went, Have you told anybody? She said, No, I'm too ashamed. And he said, Well, do you have a friend? She said, yes, yes, God, he's my friend. She said, God, he's your friend, and you never told her. And she said, yeah, but I just didn't know what she'd think. He said, well, I'll tell you what she's going to think. I want you to go tell her, and she's going to be mad at you that you didn't allow her the chance to love you.
And Father God, we just praise you and we thank you for the anointing on our lives. We ask you to bless the people as they give tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may receive the offering. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you a question before we do this, though. Uh, um, if you're here tonight, now I kind of feel like we're here, everybody in here is, uh, may know Jesus, but I really don't know. Sometimes, you know, the atmosphere is carried by the majority, but there are others who are just kind of here. Maybe you've never made a confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You say, I, I would like to, I would like to do that tonight if you're here and you've never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Would you lift your hand so I can pray for you? Well, take, you, you say, are you born again? You may be eight or nine years old. And maybe, you know, you say, how do I know if I should respond? Well, the Bible says, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart by doing nothing. That's how you get hard, when you hear his voice and you don't respond. But if you can hear his voice, he said, that's the day you want to respond. This is the day. Everybody who knows Christ, raise your hand. Is your personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. Any hand up? Uh, you guys all know Jesus. All right. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to do something else before. Everybody spirit filled? Yeah. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 You're here. Yeah. Everybody here. If you're, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you pray and you speak in other tongues, lift your hands. Several Everybody look around. Yeah. If somebody's yeah. hands not raised, ask me if they'd like to be. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Hey, I just saw you. Alright, listen. Now this is real important. Obedience always begins with something you can do. But it'll take you to something only God can do. Oh, hallelujah. Now listen, tonight, right now, I know, because see, obedience to God is not a one-time thing. It's a day laying down of something. I mean, like I said, you gotta take a shower. You need to take a shower if you do nothing but sit in your house. Do that. You know, you just need to have an outward expression of a surrendered heart. Yes, do you understand? Yeah. Yes. You gotta do something yeah. in order to step into what only God can do. Yes. So tonight, if that agrees with you, I don't know where you are, but I know the one who does. And I know that crossroads that you're at, the answer is obedience the word of God. And if that's you here tonight, everybody here who says, that's me, God, I want to stand on the outside as a show that I want to do what I can do in order for me to become what only you can make me be. I want you, everybody who agrees with that, just stand right now. Hallelujah, say, I expect great things from a great God. Your glory surrounding in this. Come on, come on, I want you to stand up. I expect great things from a great God. Your glory surrounding. Just lift your hands and just reach your toward heaven.